Hey everybody, it's Dan, the Get School Dude, once again with another GitLab CI tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about a new feature of GitLab, and that is testing the merged state. This is, of course, in our GitLab CI pipelines. So today I'm pleased to announce that one specific limitation of GitLab CI that I've discussed before in previous videos is now available for use. In case you don't know what I mean by testing the merged state, let's take a quick look at a hypothetical Git repo. And I go into this in detail in my GitLab merge request merge methods video. But as a quick refresher, when you have GitLab CI testing a topic branch like topic A or topic B or topic C, what gets tested is actually the tip of the branch, the newest commit on that branch. What's not tested is the merged state of this branch into the master branch. So up until recently, you could only test the tip of the source branch, but with this new feature, you can, instead of testing that, test the hypothetical merge commit, which would be up here, of merging topic A uh, into master, where this commit and this commit are the parents of the final merged commit. I hope that makes sense. And the official documentation here, which I'll link in the description, talks about the scenario that this solves. It's possible for your source and target branches to diverge, which can result in the scenario that the source branch's pipeline was green, the target branch's pipeline was green, but the combined output fails. And today I'm going to show you this exact use case. Now, it's probably worth pointing out that today is the first video I am showing a feature that exists in a pay for version of GitLab. You can see it was introduced here in GitLab Premium 11.10 and it's available in silver and higher tiers of the GitLab Enterprise product. Luckily, GitLab.com is using the Enterprise Edition, so everything I'm gonna show you today, you can follow along at home as long as you're using a project in GitLab.com, which is free to use for open source projects with some limitations. But today we're gonna to be using my Hello World project, which I use in a lot of videos. And I'm going to assume you know the basics of GitLab CI in this video. So if I lose you at any point, please go back and watch my previous GitLab CI videos. So before I show you the new feature, I'm actually going to show you why it exists. That's right. We're going to break the master branch, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready to cringe. The default behavior for pipelines is to trigger them on any push to any branch. And usually the branch is associated with a merge request. Right here you can see our merge request page. And let's click on this one. It says shrink default box width and length. You can see that this merge request is associated with issue 10. And all I'm doing in this merge request is changing the default size of our box class in our Hello World repo. You can see here's a constructor. The length used to be 3 and the width used to be 4, but here we're changing the length to 1 and 2. Very simple change. Up top you can see the link to the pipeline, and in this view we can see how the jobs are lumped into the stages. We have a first job that just builds our code, second job just runs it, and we have two different ways of running. Of course, our jobs are specified in the project gitlabci.yaml file, and you can see here that we have two stages, build and run stage. The build code job simply does a make, and what comes out of that is a hello binary, and then the downstream run job simply run it with no arguments, and then run it with some arguments. Very simple. So even though this merge request pipeline is passing and ready for us to hit this merge button, we aren't going to do that quite yet. I'm going to show you another merge request with a completely different set of changes and then we're gonna merge them together and see it break. It's gonna be fun, you ready? So in our first merge request, we simply change the size of the default box, very basic changes, but in this merge request, merge request 21, we actually add some more testing to the CI pipeline. Check it out, you can see we have a third stage called verify, and if we open the pipeline view, we can see it a little bit easier. And basically these jobs just verify the output of these jobs is exactly what was expected. And all we're doing here is looking at the default sizes of the box. As you can see, command line length check, nominal width check. So in this one, we check the width of the box. In this one, we check the length of the box. And you can see that if I just switch over to the branch and show you the YAML file real quick. Here you can see our new stage definition. And I've modified the code, which I won't show, to actually output some files into this new output directory. For example, If I run the binary with command line arguments, I now have a new interface to create boxes. Now it takes 10 seconds to create each named box that I've created here, and I did this on purpose for a future video, but I won't get into that right now. What you can tell though is when this is done, it prints everything to the screen, and what we have is a new output directory with a file for each command line argument, 
and if you look at that you will see that it's simply reporting its own status including length width and height so now that we have some output to check we can verify it so that's the whole point of this right so in this nominal width check job we're basically just saying hey is the output file that I expect there and does it contain a width of 4 remember each script line here's pass fail status is determined by the return code of what gets run so this will return 0 if it exists but this will return 1 if it's found so we negate it with this exclamation point it's just Linux language stuff here similarly in this verification job where we check the output of the command line run which is up here as you can see we call it with a bunch of letters so this is gonna take 10 seconds times the number of letters in the alphabet to run and we check down here that the files exist and then in the same way down here we check to see that the length of every single file that comes out of this run has a length of three if you're getting lost on the bits of the code don't worry about it that stuff's not important just hang in there all right we're on the merge request page we can see both our merge requests here have passing pipelines it's time to merge the very first merge request by hitting the merge button here we go merge complete master branch now has the capability of issue 10 and you can see that this action will immediately trigger a new pipeline build on the master branch for the merged state now it's important to note that this content is already in the master branch so I could fetch right now and get the master branch and we don't yet know if this is passed or failed and that's really the heart of the issue if this fails and I had already fetched and built some work off of it the master branch would have been broken and I wouldn't have known it so we're gonna find out the pass fail status soon we can see the first stage is done and we'll wait for this to complete and we can see that the testing on the master branch of the merged state also passed, which is exactly what we expected because in this merge request, which was just merged, all we did was change the values from three and four to one and two. Now onto the fun part. Go back to our merge request here. You can see that we have one left. We still have a pass status because the tip of the source branch is passing. And if we hit the merge button here, this content will be merged into the master branch immediately, kicking off another test in the pipelines area just like what we watched before let's check it out and now it's testing the merged state here it is our master branch is now broken the final stage failed even though the last two merge requests had passing pipelines on the tip of their source branches now as you can see testing takes about seven minutes so here is a seven minute or more window where someone could have started work off of a failed master branch so you can imagine if your testing time was even higher than this the branch would stay broken for a longer period of time now this is a simple project and I'm the only one contributing right now so it's not a big deal but you could imagine if this were a project with hundreds of people having a broken master branch is a big deal so of course we could go and we could go find well what failed so let's open one of the jobs in detail and we can see the output here we can see our check that the length equals three is no longer true so we do a length check for three on all the boxes coming out of the command line output and we find that it failed because all the lengths were changed to one in the merge request that merged right before the one we just showed here so here's the merged tab of the merge request page and we can see both MRs that had a passing state and it's interesting to note that because of the changes that were in these merge requests there was no merge conflict there was no ability for the user to understand that the merge between them would cause this failure so really the solution to this is to use the new feature from GitLab which basically says instead of testing the tip of these source branches test the final merged state of the source branch merged into the target branch now we could revert the chain by hitting the revert button in the merge request but I'm not gonna do that on purpose because I want to undo everything as if it never happened before for the last merge request and actually the only way to do that is to unprotect the branch briefly and then force push on top of it so I'm gonna do that real quick as you can see on my local master branch I have backed up to the commit right before the breakage and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get force push origin master to essentially rewrite the master branch and I'm doing it this way specifically so that I can show you what would have happened had we been using the new testing the merged state feature 
So I reopened a new merge request with the exact same content. You can see that we're right where we were before we hit this merge button that broke everything on master. Now it's time to switch over to the new testing approach. So here's how you do it. The first thing is to ensure that in your GitLab CI.yaml file, your jobs are configured to be run on merge requests. And this is how you do it. You add this block. So you can also use this block, I've talked about this in other videos, to limit testing to particular branch names or refs, what have you. In this particular notation, we're saying only run these jobs if the content is associated with a merge request. And we're just doing that for all the jobs in the file. So we're gonna go ahead and commit this change. And then we're gonna push the result. The other thing we gotta do is go into our project settings and execute this, basically check this box. We wanna find that under settings, general, and merge request. Basically we check this box, merge pipelines, we'll try to validate the post merge result prior to merging, and we hit save. So now that we've enabled this feature, we have a new button here. We see that our tip of our source branch is passing, just like it was before. But we also have this start merge train button here. And if you look in the documentation, this is the way that they manage multiple MRs all wanting to test with the merged state. So let's go ahead and hit this button, start the merge train. I'll link to this in the description too, but you can read here about merge trains. Basically it says, each MR that joins a merge train joins as the last item in the train, just as it works in the current state. However, instead of queuing and waiting, each item takes the completed state of the previous pending merge ref, adds its own changes, and then starts the pipeline, immediately in parallel under the assumption that everything's gonna pass. In this way, if all the pipelines in the train merge successfully, no pipeline time is wasted, either queuing or retrying. So this is a management scheme for how do you handle multiple MRs. If we flip over to our pipelines, we can see that a new pipeline has been triggered. Now it's pending because it's waiting for a GitLab runner resource, but you can see that it's the merge of this content into master. Now you can see on our merge request page, we've been added to the merge train at position one and the merged state of uh, issue nine into master is currently testing. So here it is, the pipeline completed and we can see that it's failed. The important point here is before we turn this capability on, there was no way to see on the merge request page if testing would have failed once the MR was merged into the target branch. Now that we've turned this on, the user gets that information and instead of hitting that merge button, they can go ahead and make the fix so that the master branch remains stable all the time. That's pretty much it for this capability, you guys. Just wanna show you how it works. If you have trouble, check out their documentation page. I'll link all this stuff in the description. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Dan, the Get School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time.